Hello and welcome to the first lecture of elementary number theory in this class. So in this video I would like to talk about some initial words and some notation that we will use uh, throughout the, the course. Now the initial words I want to mention is some general aspects of what number theory is and some things and why it's important to study number theory. And of course some notation that we will use. Now the first thing I want to talk about is um, because number theory really starts with the concept of of counting. So if you look at all the societies, even the most primitive societies, have the concept of counting. And so they need it for, for example, to count the number of cows that they have or the number of uh, belongings that they have. Or whatever, for whatever reason, they need a, the concept of counting. Now, what is counting? Uh, if you look at the real sense of the word what counting is, Counting is just matching objects that we wish to count with other objects that are familiar. Now, that might seem a uh, little weird for you, but this is actually what we do when we are counting. So when we are counting objects, let's say, for example, I want to count these uh, rectangles that are here. What I actually do is, well, when you start counting, you say one, two, three. Now, what you're actually doing is matching this, this, uh, these geometric figures, these rectangles, with the cardinal numbers. And the cardinal numbers are those numbers that we use for counting. And so that's how the number theory starts, with these numbers. So these are the cardinal numbers. So 1, 2, 3, not only 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on and so forth. So the cardinal numbers are the numbers that we use for counting. Now, other societies didn't use these kinds of uh, things. They use, for example, stones or other kind of familiar objects to count some other things. So they will have um, some other notation maybe for the numerals, but they will be using some other objects. We use the concept of number, which is in reality an, an abstraction of what the number of elements are in certain particular collections. So one represents all the collections that have one element, two represent the collection of all the um, of the, of the collection that have two elements and so on. So it's really an abstraction. The only reason we are so familiar with it is because we keep seeing it all through our lives. So it becomes very familiar. So that's why counting is you match the objects with something that are other objects that are familiar. Now we're gonna use some notation. So we're gonna denote all the cardinal numbers, all the numbers one, two, three, or oh, uh, four, and so forth, with this uh, uh, letter. So it's like an N with a bar here in this diagonal, a double bar. So what we mean by natural numbers or cardinal numbers will be this collection of uh, numbers. So one, two, three, four, and so on. So this is an infinite set, so it goes on forever. And so every time we talk about this here, we're going to mean this collection of things. So we will call cardinal or natural numbers. I probably want to use natural numbers more than cardinal numbers. Now, what is elementary number theory? So elementary number theory is it studies the properties of these numbers, the numbers one, two, three, the numbers that we use for counting. Um, now, when we talk about these numbers, it's also convenient to consider another set of numbers, which we will call the integers. So what are the integers? So the integers are going to be uh, zero together with all the natural numbers, so one, two, three, four, and also all the negatives, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and so on. Now, I have to uh, talk about this uh, before I go on. Some people will include zero as a natural number. Now, uh, that depends on the preference. It doesn't really matter that much, but for me, my preference is to exclude the zero from a natural number, because for me, natural numbers are the ones that we use for counting, and we count with one, two, three. Now, maybe computer scientists will like the natural numbers that started with zero because they start, in some languages, you start counting with zero. So they will consider zero as a natural number. But for us, zero won't be a natural number. Natural numbers will start at one. But zero is in the integer. So we call this, with this symbol, it's like a Z with a double bar here. That will be the collection of all the integers. So it's going to be also an infinite set. So that will be the, the integers. Now, in number theory, what really is, is number theory is the study of natural numbers or the integers, or uh, the zero with together with all the inverses of the naturals. 
Now you might think, well, this is kind of trivial because this is just a very easy number that we see from uh, childhood. Isn't this like a very easy thing to do? Well, in reality, number theory has one of the hardest, uh, the collection of hardest problems in mathematics. So this is a quote from Paul Erdos that I really like. And it says like this, if you can think of an open problem that is more than 200 years old, then it is probably an op a problem in number theory. So number theory has hard problems. Open problem means that it has not been solved yet. Something that is proposed, that we believe that is true, but nobody has been able to show that is actually true. So number theory, even though it it is a study of objects that we know from childhood, one, two, three, four, it has very hard problems. Problems that even today we haven't been able to solve. Now, uh, one of the reasons, one of the, the, the the things that uh, makes number theory uh, so attractive to people, there's only one reason, is that the difficulty of number theory has become into a virtue. Uh, so many of the problems in number theory are really hard. And because they're really hard, they are used for security of digital communication. So many of the security of digital communication today through internet, when you do e-banking, when you take, check your email, the security of that communication is based on the fact that there are some problems in number theory that are very difficult to solve. So if some of those problems, if someone finds a way to solve those problems in a very efficient way, then we will have to rethink or redo all the security that we do on the internet because really all of it relies on the fact that there are problems in number theory that are really hard to solve. Um, so that's what I wanted to say. So this is a so that means that number theory has an application in everyday life. So we use it every day, even though we don't realize it. So every time you turn the computer, connect to the internet, through your bank, or through the uh, your email account, you will be the machine will be do, doing some kind of number theory to secure that communication. Now it is also it has a lot of applications also in. In, uh, in computer science. So this is a, a, a phrase uh, from Donald Knott, which is the one of the fathers of uh, computer science, and he's still alive, as far as I know today. It says, every theorem in number theory is based on the problem of numerical computations of high-speed computers. So all of what we are doing has applications, not only uh, in internet communication, but also in computations that have to be done in high speed for computers. Now, Donald Knott is a famous uh, computer scientist, and also uh, Paul Erdos is a very famous mathematician. Um, he was a very famous mathematician. All right, so, so that's one of the things uh, I wanted to mention, why it's important. Now, let's continue with the notation here. So we talked about uh, what uh, the natural numbers are, that are, which we're going to denote by this symbol, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and zeta. We're going to call those the natural numbers. Uh, the integers are 0 together with all the natural numbers and the inverses of those, so the negatives of those, which is also an infinite set. Now, because I'm considering 0 not a natural number, so I'm going to have another notation for the collection of all the numbers starting at 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. We're going to call this the non-negative integers. And the reason we call them like that is because these are the integers and these are exactly the ones that are non-negative. So 0 should be there. 0 is neither negative po or positive. So this will be the collection of non-negative integers. So that's a couple of things of notation there. Now, we might talk about the real numbers from time to time. And if you took college algebra, you more or less have an idea what the real numbers are. So the real numbers basically are represented or are into one-to-one -one correspondence with the points of the real line, to so whatever that means. So the real numbers, for example, pi is a real number. All natural numbers are real numbers. Everything that is not a complex number is a real number. So everything that can be represented in this line, that is a point in this line, would be considered a real number. So e is also a real number. A square root of 2 is also a real number, and so on. Now, we might have to talk about the complex numbers sometimes. So the complex numbers basically are, is an addition 
where A is a real number, B is a real number, and I is an Im the imaginary unit with the property that the square of that is equal to negative 1. Now, if you have, haven't seen this before, this might uh, seem weird because for real numbers, the square of any number is always a positive or a 0. Uh, but this is a, uh, the complex unit. Now, the way these things are represented, the complex number, instead of being represented as a line like the real line, they will be represented as points in the plane. So if you look at the Cartesian plane, so this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, this complex number A plus BI will be represented by this arrow that is going from the origin to this point here, which is the point A comma B. So let me put it over there. So this is the point A comma B. And the complex number, of course, have operations, so multiplication, division, subtraction, uh, similar to what the real numbers have. So that's what we have so far for notation. I hope this is not too overwhelming because there's a lot of uh, letters, notation, names, and everything. But for mo the most part, we will use natural numbers and integers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, naturals, and so on. And the integers will be 0 together with the naturals plus the negatives. All right. So let's re uh, recall a little bit here. So we have natural numbers again that we have. Oops. We have here the natural numbers, which are this collection here, we have the integers, we have the non-negative numbers. We also gonna use maybe some notation for the rational numbers. And these rational numbers basically are just fractions. So it's A over B, where A and B are integers, so they come from this collection, but the denominator cannot be zero because remember, it's not defined a fraction uh, that has a denominator that is equal to zero. So this is the collection of all uh, the fractions. So basically here we'll have plus or minus one half, plus or minus three half, all the fractions. Two is also a rational number because this number two that you see here can be written as a fraction because it's two over one. So all the integers will actually be here in this collection. All the integers will be considered fractions where the denominator is just one. It's the real numbers, as I mentioned, is consider all the points in the plane, in the sorry, in the in the in the line, and the complex number are represented as points in the plane. Now, if you see this tower that I have here, this is the tower of the collections that we have so far. So we start with the natural numbers, which is one, two, three, four, and then we start with n zero. So this collection is included in here. So this collection lives inside n zero, which is one in the element more more than n then this collection lives inside the integers and the integers are also inside the rational numbers means that all the integers are rationals the rationals live in the real numbers because all the rationals can be represented as points on the real line and we can consider the real also included in the complex numbers because what you can do is you can just think about a plus bi and just put b equal to zero so you will have only the real numbers. I'm sure you, you saw this before maybe in college algebra or some other class. This is kind of like a repetition maybe for you, all this notation. So these arrows that I put here means inclusion. So this collection is included in this one and so on. Now, we're going to assume certain things here because we cannot prove all, everything. So we're going to assume the constructions of the sets. And if, what you don't, if you don't know what that means, basically is uh, there are ways to uh, prove that these things exist and that the properties that we give to them, like for the basic properties like addition, uh, multiplication, subtraction can be done in here. Now, I'm not going to do that because that will take a long time. You basically start constructing the natural numbers or with the zero also with the piano axioms. And then you construct the integers, and then you construct the rationals using equivalent classes, stuff like that, and then the real numbers, and then the complex numbers. Now, I'm not going to go into details of that. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. So we're just going to assume naive uh, approaches to the existence of these collections that are here. Now, we're also going to assume basic properties of this relation, that less than, less than, bigger than, less than or equal than, and be not equal than for the real number. So the the properties that you know, for example, from from primary school or high school of these uh, things. So those are the things that I wanted to talk uh, uh, today about in this video. Uh, 
some uh, general observations about what number theory is and some other things about the notation that we will use in the class. I know it's a lot of notation for you to take in, but it's important to go over this before we start doing more things. I will constantly remind you about the notation and the things we will use in the class so you know what we are talking about. So that's all for this video. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about more details about the natural numbers and the integers and the things that we will assume about them. So I will see you in the next video.